I'm going to be talking about the status of the adaptation uh, negotiating text on the track on adaptation, which, as you've already heard from Julianne and, and Kea, is in reasonably good shape. In fact, uh, adaptation is now a no-brainer. Everybody agrees it's needed. Everybody agrees that the vulnerable countries need to be focused on and they need support. Uh, we have some reasonably good text in place. Uh, hopefully that can be, any minor things in it can be resolved uh, over the course of next week. The sticking point is not so much in the adaptation text, but on the finance side of it. And I'm going to talk very specifically about the issues related to adaptation finance, where there are a number of questions that need to be resolved. Hopefully, they get resolved between now and Cancun, but they can always be uh, many a slip between the cup and the lip on this issue, so uh, be aware of them. I'll, I'll mention three. The first one is with the fast track finance, which has been agreed in Copenhagen of 30 billion over the next three years. How much of that is actually going to go to adaptation? The, the Copenhagen Accord uses the word balance. What does balance mean? Is it 50%, less than 50%? Nobody's telling us that. We need to know that. Secondly, the Copenhagen Accord also mentions that this funding will be new and additional. But they don't tell us new from when, additional to what. And unless we agree some baselines, everybody's going to invent their own, and that's what we're seeing happening. And that can actually undermine trust rather than build trust, which this amount of money ought to do. And then the final issue, which is a sticking point, is how do the contributing nations uh, propose to send that money to the developing countries? There's a very clear divide emerging here where the developed countries who are providing the funds have a very strong preference to do so through either their own bilateral aid channels like USAID in the United States or DFID in the UK or the World Bank or other multilateral channels. They do not want to send money through the UNFCC funding mechanisms. And then on adaptation, the UNFCC already has several funding mechanisms. Developing countries, on the other hand, have expressed a very strong <coughs> desire to see funds for adaptation come through the funds that already have been set up under the Framework Convention for adaptation. There's two in particular that they uh, highlight. One is a fund for the least developed countries <coughs> the least developed countries fund, where the 50 of the poorest and most vulnerable countries have prepared NAPAs, Na National Adaptation Programs of Action, which are prepared, ready to be implemented. The total cost for doing it for all 50 countries is about $2 billion. The fund only has $200 million in it, so it's short by an order of magnitude. A pledge to $2 billion over three years would enable all 50 countries to immediately start some urgent and, and uh, immediate adaptation actions. The other fund is the adaptation fund under the Kyoto Protocol, which is normally based on contributions from CDM, Clean Development Mechanism Transactions, where a number of countries uh, have now actually stepped forward to make contributions. We very recently heard that Spain and uh, Germany have offered to make contributions into the adaptation fund. The developing countries uh, have very clearly expressed their preference for money for adaptation to come through the adaptation fund because they have much more confidence in accessing that money uh, through the adaptation fund. So those are the issues that need to be res resolved between now and Cancun. If they can be resolved, and I think the adaptation uh, part of the agreement can be uh, uh, certainly concluded in Cancun. Thank you, Sonia.